You're welcome to our Sunday School broadcast for the 26th of July 2020 and our topic is the captivity will end. The captivity will end. Last week we talked about the captivity is surely coming. This week, whatever has a beginning has an end. The captivity whatever form it takes for you and for me will end let's pray father in the name of jesus we want to thank you again lord even for the opportunity to share your word with your people precious holy spirit i receive help i receive anointing i pray jehovah god for my brethren who are listening boy girl man woman old or young lord that you circumcise our ears you circumcise our hearts that your word will produce even that which you have proposed in jesus name we pray amen let us take our first reading from ezekiel chapter 36 ezekiel 36 beginning to read from verse 24 ezekiel 36 24 for i will take you from among the nations gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Okay, let's also look at Psalm 30, and in verse 5, Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Now, like I said before, whatever form the captivity is taking, it usually will come to an end. The anger of God does not last forever. Even if it is Satan that is bringing trouble, he can get tired. You can resist him, and he will run. Even if you don't know how to resist him, he gets fed up and then he runs. Captivity comes to an end. Weeping may last all night, but my brother, my sister, morning is coming when you and I will rejoice. Last week, we knew, we saw that this is the beginning we are in the beginning of the end times your captivity and our captivity the bible calls it the time of jacob's trouble will end when jesus touches the earth or when jesus appears in the air and there's rapture and for the people who go through the tribulation it will end Praise God because that will end in glory for the child of God. That will end in you and I seeing Jesus face to face. That will end in us having a meal with the Lord face to face. That will end in us rejoice, rejoicing and rejoining our loved ones, saints of God who have gone before that will end in us being decked in glory from head to toe my brother my sister what a glory when we know that will endure when you know that people have been talking about Jesus the church has been talking about Jesus Jesus has been preached heaven has been preached and so on and so forth can you imagine I, I want us to see begin to see it afar off 
I want us to begin to embrace it that one day you walk into the presence of God. Wow! Captivity will end. But let us come home a little bit more, a little bit closer. Whatever problem you have, the Bible says it will endure for a while. It won't last forever. Let's look at a book I read that literally changed my life. It was titled, Tough Times Never Last, But Tough People Do. My brother, as long as you're a Christian, as long as you have accepted Jesus into your life and then topped it up with the icing of the Holy Spirit, you have the seed of toughness in you. Don't say, oh, I am weak, I will not endure and I lie. Go to God and get the extra oil. God will hold you. He that has started a good work in you will continue it till the day of Christ. Tough times don't last forever. Tough people last forever. And who is a tough person? Like I said, it is that person that has Jesus in the inside of him or her. That is a tough person. God will so toughen you that you won't do things that you never imagined you would do before. Be encouraged. There's a woman in, in, in our church and Oh, we're talking about her today. Never knew anything. Never knew how to pray. Never knew how to read the Bible. Never knew. She only knew one verse of scripture. And if there was somebody you think would not make heaven, it would be somebody like her. But the day, the night before she died, the family testified that woman started praising God. She Something that she never did before. It's like God opened her eyes to see the glory of God and she started praising God in the middle of the night, worshipping God in the middle of the night, all night. And by morning, she had a stroke and she was gone. Now tell me, where has she gone to? To hell? No, she has gone to be with the Lord. You see, this God is more eager to pull people into heaven than he is to drive them into hell. This God is so loving that for those that trust in him, we should rejoice. He doesn't want to kick us out. He wants to bring us in. This God is so good. Even if you are an unbeliever, the worst unbeliever, but, but, one day you realize and say, oh God, please, I know you are God there. If you are there, please help me. Casual prayer like that. One day he will open your eyes. And you give your heart to Jesus. It's happened to a lot of people. God is kind. All he wants is for you to just believe him. Stretch out your hand in faith. Tough times never last. Tough people do. Let's say some other thing about problems. I don't know the problems you're facing. Is it money problem? Is it health problem? The half-life of every problem is shorter than the half-life of the man. Let me say it another way. You are built to last longer than your problems. The lifespan of a problem is shorter than the lifespan of the owner of the problem. Is it sickness? Is it financial lack? Is it ignorance? Is it sin? Whatever your problem is, chances are, for most of us, we'll outlive our problem. Don't worry, it will come to an end. But let me say this, that some problems are not solvable. Let us be frank. There are problems that will not be solved. Say somebody has an accident or has an illness and one leg is amputated unless there's a miracle. Naturally, that leg will not regrow. But that kind of a problem can be managed. Some problems are managed. And God will give you the grace to manage the problem. God will give you the grace to manage the problem and still live happily, rejoicing 
in God because the fact that you and I have problems doesn't mean he has abandoned us. No. God still loves you. God still loves you. Child of God, problems are not the end. In fact, God has left a lot of the problems so as to teach us, so as to toughen us. Silver will have to go through fire to become pure. There is no crown without a cross. Somebody was preaching the other day said, why do you think that even after Jesus rose from the dead, he still had the scars in his hands? He still has the scars in his legs. He still has the scars in his side. He said to Thomas, put your hand. He still had the scars. To remind us, man of God, to remind us, woman of God, that scars are signs of victory. And so when we have problems, let us not go running helter skelter. A lot of the problems, God is using them. To build you and I up so that will be strong have you ever seen a child a child is born the child is fed the child is all sorts of things but the child never gets up go and ask a one-year-old child getting up and learning to walk is a lot of challenge talking is a lot of challenge learning things about around them is a lot of challenge exams are challenges that will lead to a degree or will lead to a certificate or lead to something and therefore as a child of God let us know that challenges will come Jesus had challenges and in fact at some point in the garden of Gethsemane he so prayed the Bible says he was sweating out blood but he overcame that problem when he went to the cross, at some point he said, Father, I didn't know you have abandoned me. Why? Why? Yet, he overcame that problem. That is why we have the church today. My brother, my sister, it is time to be tough because challenges are increasing. They will increase. They say that the darkest hour is the hour before, not before dawn. Satan will make it, I'm killing you now. The next minute I'm going to swallow you. But they resist him for that period. You know that it's not that good. It's not that great. It's not that strong. He only uses tricks to cheat people. It's your own problem temptation. It will end. Jesus' temptation ended. After 40 days and 40 nights, it ended. And he stepped into his victory. So will you and I. We will step into victory. It will always come to an end. And let us know that beyond that, beyond the challenge, beyond the problem, is our crown. Let us read Romans 8. Romans 8. Okay, Romans 8. We'll come back to that. But let us go over to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 13. The hand of the Lord came to me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, cause these bones to live. Can this bone live? Sorry. So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesy as I was commanded, 
And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, breathe on this slain, and that they may live. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up from your graves. Praise the Lord. Now, let us take a little background. In those days when somebody died in Israel, they would wrap the person up with clothes mixed with all kinds of perfumes and then put them in the grave and roll a stone over the grave. The body would decay, leaving the bones and then they would collect the bones and put them somewhere. That is why Joseph said in Egypt, said, hey, God is going to visit you and take you back to the promised land, but you must take my bones along because that is the process. In the current Western world, in a lot of places, they don't keep the bones. They burn everything, cremation. They burn the body, the bones, everything, and collect the ash, the ash in a bottle. Some of them, they keep it in their house until when they are ready, they go and scatter the ash somewhere or they buy just a little piece of ground and put the ash and cover it. So that is the background. But God showed Ezekiel a valley that is full of bones like that. Dead people scattered all over the place. And God says, son of man, do you think these bones will live again? And Ezekiel didn't want to speak his unbelief. He was wise. He said, God, and I used to have it. Look, Ezekiel could have, if he was honest, he would have said, God, this thing won't happen again. What are we saying? And God said, prophesy. Number one, death is regarded as final. That is the worst death that can happen. Is that somebody dies. Hunger is small. Poverty is small. Disease is small. When somebody dies, that's regarded as final. And so if God could cause dead bones to live again, God can resurrect your business. God can heal your body. God can resurrect your soul. God can make you come back from unbelief. Have you backslidden? God can bring you back. The Bible says with God all things are possible and nothing shall be impossible to him that believeth. That is number one. Number two, the Bible said to Ezekiel, God said to Ezekiel, prophesy, speak my word. And of course, Nigerians are good at this. Speak the word of God because the word of God carries power. Let us remember that the Bible says that the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and God said God created man in his image and therefore if the word of God carries power 
the word of man also carries power. Now, even the word of an unbeliever carries power. Let us not make mistakes about it. That is why native doctors also survive. Because their own word also carries power. The source of their own power is from the other side. We know that. But even a man who is ordinary man, is not a Christian, is not a native doctor, is not involved in court, his word also carries power. That is number one. But when you now repent and you take back on the image of God in Christ, then your word carries power as well. And so that is what happened here. Every one of us, the problem with a lot of us is that we don't speak enough to our problems. We don't speak enough to our circumstances. We don't speak enough to our sicknesses. We don't even speak enough to our habits and our minds and the things that we think about. A lot of times people speak negatively, even Christians. Let me say this. The other day we were talking and one of my daughters said, look, that as a child of God, when you feel sad and overwhelmed, there are two things that are happening to you. And I want you to listen. Satan feels sad all the time. He has lost his position. He has lost his glory. What are ways for him is hell. And he knows it. So he feels frustrated. He feels dejected. And he has the means of projecting that into people. And therefore you begin to feel the way he feels. When you feel down for no reason, it just comes over you. My brother, my sister, that is the time to speak. Speak and say, Satan, get behind me. I refuse you and I refuse your sadness in the name of Jesus. Speak the word of God. And a lot of times, once you do that, you see that it clears up. There was a time I was tormented. Oh, you will die. Oh, you will die. Oh, you will die. And I was afraid. The thing was coming. Fear. I will die. And one day I said, excuse me, I'm a child of God. Why should I die? Satan, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. And when that thing cleared, I said, really? So Satan has been cheating me. A lot of times, sadness and feeling down and feeling depressed and feeling low and having low self-esteem and not seeing a future. Ah, Satan projecting his own feelings, the way he feels to you. Don't let it. The second and very important way that people feel sad is when the burden of God comes on you. Somebody is dying. Your country, your village, your community, your family is not doing well. There's something wrong with your friend or your children somewhere and a burden comes on you and you don't know it. That is the burden of the Lord. The Bible says that they that mourn shall be comforted. When that morning kind of gloom come over you that is the time to begin to pray sometimes you tongue and you pray and it lifts and you feel better and the next day it comes again the next hour it comes again push it push it back to god that is the burden of the lord a lot of people because they didn't know ended up being depressed and in hospital just because they misinterpreted it my brother when that comes when sadness comes don't take it as a child of god fight it continue to insta intercede continue to pray it is so, sometimes it is the burden of the lord which you have to pray through and break through and then he lifts the word of god is powerful but like we said last week if it is just what you read in the bible it's information it is called logos when you go to god with the word of god and you begin to speak what God has told you last night or yesterday, it is most powerful. But let us also note that even when Ezekiel prophesied and something started happening, God started picking the bones. If the leg bone was in Calabar and the hand bone was in Umaya, God will pick them together. The bone to his own bone, join them together. 
and then put connective tissue and then put muscles and put vessels and finally put skin but the bible says there was still no life let us remember that when god created adam in the garden there was no life he used more than he molded the man but there was no life until something happened the bible says god put in his spirit so ezekiel has prophesied the word of god which is very important which is very very powerful and he did a lot of marvels ezekiel would have been confused and said god so what now yes they look like human beings but they're not moving they're not talking and god said one thing is still lacking bring my spirit in the word that is interpreted breath or wind is also spirit he said call my spirit and then when he prophesied the spirit of god came and all of a sudden they stood up a great army the spirit of god is important in ezekiel chapter 30 no 47 we read that the man took me took him ezekiel into the river ankle deep knee deep waist deep and then it became a river that he could not cross that is how the spirit of god grows in the life of a man of god the more you follow the leading of the spirit of god the more you go deeper the more power there is in your word because the spirit of god begins to fire the word it is no longer empty word so some people say well i have said it it doesn't happen but the other person who is more anointed came and said exactly the same thing and things changed why because he is more anointed we are equal in grace we are not equal in anointing what brings anointing is we go to god and we wait on god and we fast and we pray and we thirst for the spirit of god and the spirit of god is rising from the ankle so to say to the knee to the waist and then it becomes an overwhelming anointing and the world begins to hear of you and i my brother the word of god is true because if it is not true then god is not true when we have a problem there's a problem in nigeria there's a problem in abia state there's a problem in other states of the of the federation wherever you find yourself there's a problem there's kidnapping there's all kinds of things we need to begin to prophesy we need to begin to prophesy we need to begin to speak the word of god we need to begin to fight so that captivity will end and definitely it will end if we continue to be faithful is it captivity like i said before in your personal life in your family in your business speak the word of god add the spirit of god grow in the power of the holy ghost and we'll see the captivity end god bless you are you a child of god have you given your heart to jesus god bless you speak the word of god prophesy the word of god add the spirit of god and things will move if you are not born again if you are not giving your heart to jesus this is the time to do it today not tomorrow pray this prayer after me dear lord jesus thank you for dying on that cruel cross for my sins forgive me come into my heart be my lord and savior write my name in the book of life canceling from the book of death thank you for answering me lead me to the end father thank you for this one and for indeed every one of us we pray jehovah god that you help us even to endure till the end is anybody sick among us lord we pray that your spirit will catch that person and heal him or her in the name of jesus thank you for answering us tune in next week the same station the same time for another exciting edition of our sunday school broadcast go into youtube type in joseph anyoha facebook joseph anyoha you get these messages there as well god bless you in jesus name amen <music>